Hi everyone and welcome to CubeTube. Today we're going to discuss another element and the element of today is the element 90, which is thorium. Thorium is quite a, um, uh, how do you say that, a, a controversial element. Uh, we will get to it. Um, first, I'm, first off, I'm going to ask a question and I want you to think about it. Like maybe you have an idea what the, what the answer of that question could be. So thorium contains a lot of energy. Uh, as you can see, it's quite high up in the periodic system. Out of the 118 elements, it's 90th. And uh, my question would be, since there is so much energy in it, suppose we could make a way that we can use and harness the energy inside of thorium. How much thorium do you think we would need to, to actually supply our whole life of electrical energy? Now, think about it. We'll get to it at the end of the video. And for now, we're going to dig into what thorium actually is. So it's element number 90 in the periodic system. Let's see, uh, see what we got here. So we got a beautiful block here. It's acrylic again, thanks to the guys of uh, Engineered Labs. TH, it's element number 90. It is thorium and it has an atomic mass of 232.04. Now, what can we tell about this? Well, well first of all, it has 90 protons and 90 electrons. It also is radioactive. Now, will that mean that if I hold this for too long, my hands will fall off? No, far from. Radioactivity comes in, in, in different blends. And basically what radioactivity means is that an element will decay um, at a certain point uh, because it's unstable. And by decaying, it will, the, the, the electrons and the neutrons will go away slowly from this, from this, uh, from the element. And that is causing radiation. And that radiation is basically can, can in some cases harm people, but in this case is perfectly harmless because the, the radiation can't even get really through this acrylic block. Now also, uh, because we're talking here about isotopes 230 and 232, which have a half time in this case of 14 billion years, which is about the age of the universe. Um, to put it into perspective, if I would leave it on the shelf for another 14 billion years, then all the thorium that is inside of here will have decayed into other elements. Now, that is very slow and therefore the radiation, yeah, there is radiation, yeah, it is unstable, but it's not um, what you would expect to, um, to, to really cause harm. It's a solid at room temperature, as you can see. Uh, its melting point is 750 degrees, which is quite uh, quite high. And it's named after the Swedish god Thor. How surprising. And it's discovered in 1828 uh, by Swedish chemist uh, Jens uh, Jacob Berzelius. And it's a glancing silvery and white. Wow, I can agree with that. And if you expose it to air, it will slowly turn black because it will oxidize. Now, slightly disappointing, this is not pure thorium. And the reason for that is that pure thorium is actually really rare uh, to come by because nobody actually uses it at this point. Um, that may change in the future, but, uh, but we get to that later. But this is an alloy of thorium and tungsten. Now, why is that easier to come by? Um, well, it is because thorium tungsten alloys are used as electrodes. And very likely these were used in the process of, uh, of creating electrodes. And when they did, they decided they didn't need these pieces. And uh, basically the supplier decided to put it in an acrylic cube. How lovely. I'm really glad for that. Now, a remarkable property of this is that um, of all the oxides, so mixtures with oxygen, thorium oxide has the highest melting point, which is basically 3,300 degrees Celsius, which is quite high. There is a purpose for that, which I will talk about later, um, where they basically decide, hey, let's make an application for that. Now, thorium has been in the news the past 20 years because it could potentially be an alternative for the nuclear energy that we currently have. Um, why is that? Well, it has a lot of energy built in there. To give an example, if you have uranium, it has a lot of energy in there. But 
in nuclear in nuclear reactors we don't use all that energy we just use a use a bit of it and this is why we also have a lot of nuclear waste when we're done using it with thorium first of all that's different there might be a way of basically extracting all that energy from um from thorium itself plus you will have less nuclear waste and also on top of that it's much more common to find in the earth crust than uranium um, which is, I think, also a good idea to, to think about using thorium instead of uranium. Thorium is already sometimes used in nuclear reactors, but not in the way that we're now going to discuss. Now, why would it be an advantage to make another part, a type of nuclear reactions, uh, uh, nuclear reactors? I mean, nuclear reactors are very unpopular right now because of Fukushima and Chernobyl. Now, what would be a reason to, to, to do something different? Well, first of all, um, one of the advantages is that it's less easy to make nuclear weapons from the waste that you get from thorium. So the the problem that we that and this is also why nobody put in a lot of interest in thorium is that people wanted to create nuclear bombs. And this is why the nuclear reactors that we now have are based on uranium uh, because that's what they were initially meant for. Thorium reactors are molten salt reactors where you basically create a fluid in which you create the heat, which is a chemical process. So it works totally different from normal nuclear reactors. Normal nuclear reactors, like I explained in the zirconium video, uh, you have rods, you have uh, basically a lot of heat um, that is being exposed to it. Um, you have solids that could interact with uh, with other um, uh, yeah with other with other elements. So it's it's a it's a way more explosive uh, 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 thing, and this is also why I think it's it's good to investigate this because the explosion danger or the, the danger of a meltdown is is well basically zero for a molten co uh, molten core reactor. Um, also. Uh, there is a lot less nuclear waste. Like I said, the, the, the thorium can be used much more energy ef efficient. So you can extract much more energy from the thorium, which is also really nice to, um, to, yeah, to basically do uh, because, well, uh, the waste right now that we have, sometimes have, we have to store it for 100,000 years. In the case of thorium, we could, we could have that or, or, or maybe even less than that. Maybe a little bit more radioactive, but because of the more radioactiveness that we have, it will also decay faster, which is a good thing. Um, the other thing uh, that is a little bit of a disadvantage is that this technology is on paper uh, right now. There are some some uh, science projects around this. There are some some real proof of concepts currently in uh, France, the Netherlands and, uh, and and China where they're trying this uh, this this thing out but it takes a lot of money to do the research on this. The idea is now that by probably 2030 we will have working molten salt reactors. Another thing is that uh, you can make them a lot smaller than the nuclear reactors that you have right now. So you can you can have them, for instance, in every village um, and, and make them modular. So you, um, yeah, it works in a totally different way than, um, than, than basically the power plants that we now have, the, the nuclear power plants that we now have. Um, another thing is that it's, uh, it's relatively expensive right now uh, because of the research, but also because of regulations. There is no regulations yet. Everything has to be designed, um, and I think that there were some papers on, on, on regulations, and I thought they were already around, what was it again, 100,000 pages of regulations and stuff like that. So that it, it's, it gets extremely expensive to, to get everything done there. There is also a strong lobby against it. I mean, like I, like I explained, the nuclear power is not very popular after Chernobyl and, um, and, and Fukushima uh, accidents. So... Yeah, this is why there is a strong lobby against it. You can see that countries like Germany basically shut down all the nuclear plants and try to find out all kinds of ways to do energy different rather than to investigate whether this is a feasible option. Um, well, like I said, currently there's uh, projects going on in Netherlands, France and, and China, and I, I, I think that's a good idea. I mean, 
uh, right now we are in an energy transition and I think you should try and look for every solution that you have to, uh, to, to, to check out whether it's an, uh, it's an option. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I can tell about what it could do. Now, what do we use it currently for? Well, we use it for gas mantles of camping gas lights. Um, that's, that's one of the purposes uh, that, that people use it for. Another thing is lab crucibles. And this, is, this ties into the 3300 degrees Celsius that it, um, where it melts. Because if you have a lab crucible, it, you sometimes need to have very high temperatures and very extreme conditions. Thorium oxide can help you that. So basically, if you have porcelain that is made of thorium oxide, that's what you want to use it for, lab crucibles. The other thing we use it for is lens glass for cameras and, uh, and other optic devices. Um, why? Because you can get really, really um, A-grade uh, glass from it. Now, I promised to basically answer the question. Suppose we would have a working molten salt reactor. How much thorium would you need to um, basically get energy for your whole life? Well, the answer to that is um, is quite interesting. A part of pure thorium as big as this would power your entire life. Quite extraordinary, right? So, hope you enjoyed the video. Next week, we're going to discuss uh, another element. I uh, wish you all a happy week.